Animal products contain things that we don't want and lack some of the things we do want. Hey guys, Aaron and Dusty here with Eat, Move, Rest. So today we're gonna to talk to you about a big one. The biggest question, in fact, that we always get as vegans or as plant eaters. Right. So what is that question? Where, Where do, do you, you get, get your, your protein? protein? Ah! As annoying as it is, we have to answer this question pretty often and we try not to get annoyed by it because honestly, it's a valid question. I think yeah. we had the same question when we started out. So we're gonna let you guys know. So now that we're full on educated plant eaters, the way that we usually respond when somebody asks us, how do you get your protein is, well, how much do you think that we actually need? Right. And it's a common misconception that we need to be cramming all these drinks and powders and mixes and potions on top of meat on meat on eggs on dairy at every <laughs> meal, but it's just, it's false. Right, and that used to be me work out, come home, eat eggs, eat steak, like crazy, feel like crap, not know why. But I needed the protein, right? Yeah. So the RDA actually only recommends that we get 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight or 0.36 grams per pound of body weight, which only equates to what? Yeah, about eight or 10%. So. Yeah, and that's actually with a margin of safety factored into it. Yep. We actually are just fine on actually 5% of protein, but just to cover the bases, the <laughs> RDA factors in that cushion. Right. So rest assured, most of us are getting all of the protein that we need. The daily recommended protein intake is about 42 grams, and there are exceptions to that. Obviously, if you're an athlete, if you're pregnant, if you're just a bigger person, you're gonna need more than that. I know from for myself, just eating plants the last two years, and when I do track it or, or keep track on chronometer, I get like 60 to 75, sometimes even 80 grams, and that's without like trying and just eating plants. So, right. so yeah, if you're an athlete or highly active, or if you're pregnant, it's not that you need more protein, it's that mainly you need more calories. Right. So if you're getting more calories, you're getting more protein right. with that package. So even if all you're eating are bananas and you eat more calories of simply bananas, guess what? There's protein in those bananas. Your protein's going up with those calories. You're going to be set. And if you're saying, well, there's not enough protein in bananas, I'm going to have to eat a thousand bananas to get my protein. It's just not true. Because what happens when we get too much protein, it's bogging down our system. When you're maxing yourself out at a certain point, yeah. your kidneys just have to get rid of the rest. So when you're eating too much, especially at one sitting, you're just making your organs work on overtime and guess what? That makes your body tired. It makes you slow and sluggish. So if you're an athlete, it's going to affect your performance. Right. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. There are 20 amino acids and nine of them are essential, meaning our bodies don't make them. We need to find them in the foods that we eat. And plants, surprise, surprise, mm -hmm. have all of them. So there's a common myth, and I used to, to believe and worry about it, that you had to combine food to make a complete protein. So the brown rice has this amino acids, black beans have these, combine them and you create a complete. That's a myth. You, we now know that you don't have to combine the foods to, compl to have a complete protein. Your body actually stores them and uses them right. when they need them. Yeah, we've got an amino acid pool in our bodies. Right. So it takes what amino acids it needs from this food, and then maybe at dinner time it takes these ones it needs. Right. And so it's got that store there. Moving on, we finally get to what do you eat? Where do you get your protein? Okay, we're finally gonna actually tell you like <laughs> what we eat. Right. Most people you'll talk to will say, oh, kale and spinach and collards and while well, greens, yes, leafy greens in fact do have protein. Popeye. Most, yeah, Popeye was not far off, but <laughs> other than the fact that he was eating canned spinach, is, canned foods are usually pretty nutrient void anyway. <laughs> but aside from that, yes, greens are super high in protein and we try to incorporate them into every single meal of our day, starting with a green smoothie in the morning. I'll put a link below to my lean green protein smoothie, the go-to. Got a blog post and video on that recipe. So yeah, greens at every meal. 
Maybe that means a green salad at lunch. Maybe that means steamed broccoli um, with with your dinner. Right. So getting those in, but they're not calorie dense. You're gonna need to eat a mountain of spinach to get enough protein. And most of us just simply don't do it. We don't have the stomach for that. Right, so Dom's Thompson, we'll link to him below, says he has the t-shirts that say, eat what elephants eat, right? All they eat are big piles of leafy greens. Literally, they eat like tons and tons of greens and rhinos, hippos, they're like the largest mammals on the planet, strongest, all they do is eat their greens. But like Aaron said, they're not very calorie dense. So what else has protein that you can eat? We typically like to say there's three big areas yeah. to look to. We say greens, grains, and beans. Yep. So we already touched on greens. Calorie dense, if you're looking for calorie density, you're gonna look at grains and beans and yep. legumes. So for grains, we've got all kinds. We like to store ours. We'll give you a little sneak peek. We put them in mason jars. We've got quinoa, brown rice, red lentils, green lentils. So we try to at least incorporate those into our dinners every night. Right. Then you have beans. So my personal favorite are black beans. You go through Chipotle, you get a pile of black beans. <laughs> but you've got, again, a million kinds of beans. Red beans, kidney beans, white beans, cannellini beans, adzuki beans. Like the list goes on and on. Right. And they're all tasty. <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, grains and beans are highly versatile. They're yep. not super extremely like flavor packed, so you can really kind of <laughs> spice them flavor up. them with seasonings, herbs, and, and spices to yeah. make different ethnic dishes and have all kinds of different options and you can mash them and blend them and do all kinds of stuff. The best thing, they're dry. They last forever yeah. and they're really inexpensive. Yeah. You can literally buy bags of rice this big for a few dollars bags of beans this big for a few dollars. And if you mm -hmm. have the space, store them away and you got protein for weeks. Greens, grains, and beans. Start there. So you're probably thinking, well, you know, I can eat a pile of beans and rice and greens, or I can just eat this thin little chicken cutlet or this piece <laughs> of salmon or this hard boiled egg and I can get way more protein. Right. Why wouldn't you just do that? Animal products contain things that we don't want, like saturated fat, cholesterol, fillers, antibiotics, all kinds of nasty stuff. And they lack things that we do need, like fiber. 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 <laughs> fiber. fiber. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me give you a little statistic here. <laughs> Only 3% of the population is deficient in protein. Right. And there's actually a medical term for it. There's a medical condition. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't <laughs> know how to spell it. You've probably never heard of it, which essentially means you don't need to worry about it. Right. On the other hand, only 3% of the population are getting enough fiber. That means 97% of the population isn't getting enough fiber. Yeah. So that equates to slower digestion, weight gain, sluggishness, and just not being regular, which nobody likes. No. <laughs> it all boils down to how do you feel, how do you perform, and for athletes like Aaron and I, we consider ourselves to be athletes. We can fully vouch for our performance our rest, everything. So I tell everybody all the time, my 30 year old self could totally kick <laughs> my 20 year old's butt. And I say that with confidence, I actually believe that. Yeah. I feel stronger, I sleep better, my inflammation is way down, I recover quicker from workouts, and I, it's just great, everything. Yeah. The most recently we got our blood work done and actually yesterday we were going through old files. We found old blood work. Our cholesterol have gone down from the last few years, which yeah. as you age, that's not normal. Usually cholesterol and everything goes up. Ours have gone way down. And you know, certain little markers just showed red flags. Whereas now consistently the past three years, the blood work has been perfect. Right, <laughs> getting better in fact. Yeah. So how do we put it into practice? Going back to our buddy Rich Roll and his podcast, something we've learned from him and his family is a meal that they like to call the one bowl. Yep. So what one bowls are is just basically what we already said, like a green, a grain, a bean, 
and maybe like baked potato or baked sweet potato. We love sweet potatoes. Right. And you can change these bowls up every single night. Yeah. One night you do quinoa, steamed broccoli, uh, sweet potato and black beans. And the next that night you do brown rice, brown rice kidney beans, yeah. steamed kale, and regular potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's tons of endless options. And then on top of that, you can put healthy fats on top. Yeah. Avocado is a favorite of ours or guacamole right. or like hummus or tahini dressing. So if you don't believe us, if you're still a skeptic, you're on the fence trying to decide if you should go plant-based or just dabble in plant proteins, I'm gonna give you three resources to check out for yourself. Number one, the proof is in the patients and their physicians. Right. So we want you to research physicians and their work, like Dr. Esselstyn, like Dr. Michael Greger, T. Colin Campbell, yeah. Dr. Ornish, um, Dr. McDougall, the list goes on and right. on and on. <laughs> You can look at these doctors doing this work with their patients, feeding them a whole foods plant-based diet and see how they're not only preventing heart disease, but in a lot of cases, they're reversing it right. at any age. It doesn't matter how old you are. Yep. So number one, the proof is in the patients and their physicians. Yep. Number two, the proof is in the papers. Check out the researchers, check out PubMed. There's published articles, research articles with all kinds of information and numbers and statistics if that's gonna help you out. <laughs> and number three, the proof is in the performance, right. in the performers. Like How many said, athletes are there out there that are vegan? Yeah, like we said before, Rich Roll of all people is like thriving on a plant-based diet, doing Ultramans, like crazy, crazy things. Like 100 mile races, yeah, if not no longer joke. and further. Yeah. We have Doms Thompson, who we already mentioned, 300-pound yeah. vegan, NFL yeah. linebacker. We'll link to these guys below. You can check yeah. them out. Yeah, so we're going to give you guys links to the physicians and those helpful websites, maybe a couple great articles like the Rich Roll one and right. a couple of these athletes to check out as yeah. well. So like I said, if you're on the fence, the proof is in the patients, the proof is in the papers, and the proof is in the performers. Yep. And if that's not enough, we've got a bonus, number four for you. <laughs> the proof is in the plants. It all comes down to you. Try it for yourself, go plant-based, even if it's a, for a short amount of time, and try it for yourself. The proof is in the plants. If you haven't already, you can check out our plant-based story. We'll put the link below to that video, or maybe yep. I'll put it up in the corner, the little info button. Click that right now, and it'll take you over, and you can watch and hear how we started just yeah. by going cold turkey for 40 days. If you guys like this video, do like we always say, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment below, show us a little <laughs> bit of love, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click that bell notification. Yes, the bell. <laughs> the bell to stay notified when we release new videos, you'll be alerted. <laughs> yeah, so on top of that, we're all over social media, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Snapchat, Aaron Stanzik, DB Stanzik. Yep. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, eat, move, and rest better. <laughs> okay, so that crucial element is fiber. fiber. <laughs>